Hello! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Phoebe. This is Moonshine Stitchery. My last name is Moon. And um, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am really excited for this video. A, it's Easter. I'm filming this on Easter and so it's a super fun and happy day for me today. And also I have a lot of things to share with you. I have an FFO. I finished my first pillow and um i have a finish for you i have a new start and then some whips i also am gonna have haul and talk about plans so i'm really excited i also did film a little portion to share with you of me dyeing my own fabric i do not i'm not like a pro or anything like that um but i do like to dye my own fabric it's really fun it's like part of the whole experience for me and i know that some of you have asked me to share my process with you so just take that as it is it's just my personal process you might want to try it you might find um, that you enjoy it just as much as me so i will include that in about the middle of the video as well so the first thing i want to share with you is my fully finished item and my finish as well which will become a fully finished item probably before my next floss tube so let's go ahead and look at those two things all right i'd like to get started today with my ffo i'm super excited about this fully finish i've only fully finished one other project before and gifted away for christmas and so this is my first fully finish um that I can hang in my own home. I, you know, in the past I've had other fully finishes and, and sent those away as well. So this is the first one since I started my floss tube channel. So this is Loose Feathers number one from Blackbird Designs. You guys saw me finish this a couple weeks ago and then I was determined to make a little pillow out of it. So I used the Vonna Pfeiffer tutorial. I believe that she has two for pillows, or maybe two or more. I used the one where it talks about finishing it with chenille. Obviously, I didn't put chenille on the edges. I like things a little bit more simple, I think I'm learning as I go along. and um, But that tutorial did work really well and helped me finish it. So here's how I finished it. I just put some fabric on the back, and it has... Um, so if you're thinking about finishing a pillow, watch her tutorial. I do have some very small amount of finishing experience or sewing experience from when my mom taught me to sew when I was a child. Um, so I'm not completely unlearned on a sewing machine, but it has been a long time since I used one. And so I think given that, um, that means that her tutorial was really good. So my opening was over here on the side. I can see it a little bit where I haven't snipped the thread completely, but I think it worked really well. I filled this with fiber fill and um, I just got this fabric from um, Hobby Lobby and I bought enough of it that I could probably do four pillows in this series with that fabric on the back and then I got another one so I can do the rest of the series because I really, really love it. It basically uses all the same floss, at least from the first to the second pattern, so I have it all ready to go for whenever I wanna start that. So I did stitch this with the called for flosses. It is stitched two strands over two um, linen threads and this is probably a little bigger than I will do the next one. I think I'll probably do the next one on 40 count. So it'll be big and then they'll get small. But I really, really love it and I do have it sitting um, in its place that I had prepared for it on this little antique desk in my living room and I am very, very pleased with it. So thanks to Vanna and I'm excited to see what I can do next. The next project that I wanna share with you is my finish. So I did draw this pattern um, using my random wheel. This is not the one that we chose together last video from my mania, but this is a mania piece, which is why it had a bunch of work on it. And this is July wordplay from With Thy Needle and Thread. I just love it. This was such a fun, easy stitch. It has enough different colors to keep me interested. And the little motifs are compelling. They work together. I love the design. So you'll see in my hauls section that I did grab a few more of these that I plan to do because I did really enjoy this stitch. The only change that I made is I changed the mermaid's skin color and I think that was it. Everything else is stitched with the called for flosses. It's stitched with two strands over two linen threads. This is an R&R &R 
32 count, I believe. It's just an undyed piece and um, I'm going to be finishing this into a pillow as well. I just need to go find some fabric for the back, so yay. I have always forgot to mention, but I don't know if you noticed that what I have behind me during my videos is um, what I was working on last week. So you can remember what I was doing uh, two weeks ago in my last floss too, not last week. And then next week the backdrop will be what I was talking about today. So you can see and remember what I was doing last week. And if you didn't join me for last uh, two weeks ago's video, then you can go back to my most recent one and find the stuff that is behind me. So I'm really, really excited about those and they were so fun. I loved both of them. They're both part of a series which I plan to continue. So that's super fun for me too. So um, now we're gonna move into whips. I do think I have a little bit more than I usually have. Um, because I have been enjoying touching more of my projects lately and so let's go ahead and let's look at all the things that I've been working on in the past two weeks. Alright, so I'm going to get into my whips now and this is the project that I rolled with uh, you for my last video. Hold on, let me turn it around. This pattern repeats itself turning um, at a right angle as you go around, so it's hard for me to keep track of which side is at the top, even though I have this at the top, which should have told me, but you know what I discovered when I was stitching this time is that I stitched on it once for Mania, then I pulled it out again, you know, a few months ago, and when I had done that, I didn't face the right side to the top, so my X's, which were going, you know, I always go across to the top corner and then cross back this way so that the the half of the stitch just laying on the top is going from top left to bottom right um I had flipped it so half of this design even though you can't tell from here is the stitches aren't facing the same way and that was really frustrating to me when I got this back out and I was like oh man I don't even know if I want to stitch on it because it's doing that and it's gonna frustrate me but I decided to just go with the way that I had stitched it the time before last and so continue in that second um, frame facing of this pattern and that's just what I decided to do and it'll be fine. It'll be fine because nothing needs to be perfect and um, you know nothing is perfect and oh I definitely need to put this stripe in the bus here because I can see it's missing since I have that one there. So I would say I probably did well you can see from the comparison photo but I did, you know, like a like about this much amount of it, so like a third of what I'd done before. And then I just got excited to stitch on something else. I wasn't that compelled to put a lot of stitches into this one, even though I think the design is really cute. I'm stitching it with the called for um, floss. It's using charcoal from Gloriana. And I really like the fabric too. This is, I believe, a picture of this plus fabric. And um, I like it. I just was excited to stitch on other things. And so that's why I didn't get more done. I probably should have been able to get a finish on this, but um, I just, I need to be more interested in it. And then it will really, I think, zoom through. So there is, um, that's Ink Circles Half the Fun. And that was my first whip. On my nails, by the way, this is a polish from my brand Moonshine Manny. This is called Dante and it's inspired by the spirit guide in the film Coco. And if you wanna learn more about my nail polish brand, I always link that website for you below to go check that out. We have nail care products such as hand cream, cuticle oil, acetone additive, which is something that you add to your nail polish remover to make it less um, hard on your nails when you're using those products to take off your polish so it nourishes the nails as you're doing that because I add my own custom blend of oils. So there's a lot of things that you could check out there and um, I have a lot of custom handmade nail polish too if you want fun nails. Okay, the next project that I stitched on is called Never Forget. It's from Yasmin's Made With Love. I will link the website down below. I will also link her floss tube and this is stitched on under the sea fabric in the color Valkyrie. This is a 28 count Jobelin. And she uses Tom and Lily flosses for her designs, I've noticed, and I don't have any of those. So I just picked my own shades of over-dyed cotton and um, 
she also has a DMC conversion on there, but I wanted to have some variegation going on in here. I love this pattern so much. So this go around, I learned my lesson. Um, I started this pattern on a 28 count and I just really didn't want to use two strands. It's not my favorite. And so, and actually this weave is really, really tight from under the C fabric. So I'm really glad that I just did one strand. So it's going to look not as bright, not as puffy and more prim, but I really, really like it. And so um, if you're interested in my floss conversion, just give me a shout out. It has Gentle Arts, it has um, Classic Colorworks, Gentle Arts and Weeks in there, but I really enjoy it. I just went with stuff that I thought was pretty similar to the DMC. And I'm loving this so much. It's really fun. Yasmin is just amazing at her designs. And if you like stuff that is on the more colorful side, definitely check her website out. So this is going to be a, a big heart. There's birds in the middle. It's so, so cute. So I'm really excited to pull this out again. And um, that was my new start for the last two weeks. Okay, so last week, along with watching me draw, um, roll the random piece from my Mania, which was the Ink Circles piece, I also showed you my Tiny Decisions wheel, and the first project that it chose for me to do was Tisket a Tasket. And if you remember in my Whip Parade, I um, wanted to restart that project because I was stitching it over one on 28, and I was just not loving it because it was just too small. I couldn't see all the beautiful colors enough, and it wasn't a fun stitching experience for me. I clearly forgot to finish this thread before I put it away. I don't know what I was thinking. So I decided to stitch this on this beautiful green from Be Stitch Me. This is called Evergreen. It's a 40 count, and um, I picked this piece because this pattern only has grays, creams, and blues, and so I thought it would be a good piece for this because I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do with this beautiful piece of evergreen. It has limes and then all these yummy greens and teals. And so I figured this would be perfect for this. So here's what I got done. It was so much more enjoyable on this piece of fabric than on the original one, even though I really like the original one. It just wasn't going to work for me. So I only got about as much done as I did on the original piece. I didn't get a fabulous amount of work done because I only stitched on this for maybe like a day because I was just antsy and feeling very squirrely in the last two weeks. I wanted to touch a lot of different pieces, but I did really like it. The only downside is this is the first time that I've stitched on a very dark piece of fabric in a long while. I stitched on a piece of Navy Ada from a Dimensions Gold kit a long time ago. And that's the last time I stitched on something dark. And so I'd forgotten how difficult, how much more difficult it is to stitch on something like this than on a light piece of fabric where you can see the stitches and the holes easier. So that's the only downside of that, but I really am happy that I restarted this piece on here and I think it's gonna look great. So now I'm no longer um, putting Tisket to Tasket in time out. She's gonna be back in my regular rotation. Oh, and I'm stitching this on the 40 count with one strand of floss over two linen threads and I'm using the called for over dyed. So I had so much fun using the Tiny Decisions wheel this last two weeks. Here's another project that I drew using my wheel. So I got out um, Remember Me from Teresa Kogut and this is on a piece of hand dyed blue fabric and it is a 40 count and it has blues and creams kind of like a sky um, like a summer sky and I'm doing my own conversion on this pattern because I just didn't really want to do it in DMC and so here are my flosses we have a mix of Weeks Classic and Leo and Roxy floss in here oh there's one Gentle Arts so I just used my DMC um, book of flosses and picked out things that I had. I want to start using my Leo and Roxy flosses in more things so you will see them pop up in more stuff. If you're interested in this, um, in my conversion for this, just leave me a comment and I will get that list to you. Um, so yeah, I'm really loving this. I will put up on the screen where I was at last time. So you can see the progress I've made. Basically, I came over and put in this whole part. So I added these little guys in here, the little dots, and then I think 
I added that and then this whole beautiful flower and this gorgeous flower. I did all the outlining for most of it. There's just a little bit left here and then a little up here and then I will get to fill that in. There's actually two colors of fill in floss so it's not gonna be just straight easy fill in but I'm loving this flower. It's my favorite one so far. This pattern is so beautiful as you've seen. I've popped it up on the screen and I love it so much. So I was really excited when this came back out. I'm stitching it on 40 count with one strand of floss over two linen threads and I just adore it. It's so, so pre precious, love the colors, love how much, how many different things there are to stitch in here. And I'm only in the very top little tiny right hand corner or left hand corner, excuse me. So really love this again, that's Teresa Kogut. Remember me if you aren't a member of her Patreon, I highly encourage you to do that. This was um, released back in September of 2022 to tier three and four of her Patreon. And um, I just, I really love it. So encourage you. All right, a super similar vibe because I'm stitching it on a piece of sky blue hand dyed. This is Winter Rose Manor. I love it on this piece of 28 count Lugana. And the colors are just popping on here so nicely. I'm so excited to have this for winter time. So this is going to be quite big on this piece of 28 count, but that's okay. And um, I'm just loving it. I'm This is another piece that I'm stitching on 28 count with just one strand of floss, and it's what made me decide to do the um, Never Forget with just one strand because I love it so much on this. So... Um, I love this medallion so much. This is not what I did this time though. So I basically put in all of these little white snowflakes and then I had done all that over there. So I just did this much. I finished up the page, which was here. That was the end of the first page. And then I started into the second page and started on these cute little birds. And this piece is such a treat to work on. I really, really love it. I actually only got in one day on this before it was time for me to film this floss tube. That's why there's not a ton more done. But in one day I, I worked on, you know, that, that I just showed you all of this. So it's just, this pattern goes really quickly, especially with just one strand of floss. And I really enjoy it. So this is Winter Rose Manor. Did I even say that? You guys know what this is, right? I put it on the screen. Winter Rose Manor from With Thy Needle and Thread. I love, love, love it. So um, I think everybody and their dog are stitching this. But if you haven't started yet, I encourage you to. It's a really fun, um, engaging stitch. And I really love it on the blue. If you haven't decided what you were going to put it on because you didn't know what you should pick because of that house that's stitched with conch, which is this color, it's going to show up great against the blue. So I recommend the blue to you. Hey, hey, another project that I love. This is Jenny Bean's Christmas from Shakespeare's Peddler. Jenny Bean's Christmas Sampler, and I'm using the called for flosses with the exception of Rose Garden. Um, I couldn't find that, so I'm using Red Rocks from Weeks. So this outer one is supposed to be Rose Garden, and I'm using Weeks Red Rocks. That's the only difference here. I'm stitching this on a piece of 40 count Country Mocha from Zweigart, and I love it. It's so fun. This floss right here, I think this one is Walnut. It's gorgeous. I love it. I love all the flosses that she chose. And it's such a fun project to stitch on. So as you can see from my side by side, I um, did a little bit more of the bordering, added in these, this, this, and a lot more of the house. So really delightful. I don't have more done on it simply because I'm loving like switching up my project every other day right now. So um, I am excited for when this gets drawn back out though because I love this project. I love the count that it's on. I love the flosses. I love Shakespeare's Peddler. It is such a treat. So there you have that. The last whip that I have from the last two weeks is Salute to Abigail from Blackbird Designs. I'm stitching this on a piece of hand dyed 40 count with a lot of browns and some kind of washed out gray teal. And I am using my own conversion for this one. I just picked from stash rather than go, you know going with the specific colors. So I'm using Buckeye Scarlet. I'm using Blue Jay for the light blue. I'm using Navy 
from Weeks for the dark blue, and then I'm using light khaki for the cream color. So really loving this. It's on 40 count, one strand over two, and I'm only stitching on this one day a month. Um, it comes out on the fourth of every month, and so it's not going super quickly, but I really, really love it, and I'm really enjoying the um, patriotic stitching right now. So I did, as you can see, I did this whole part here. I started in here, I added a little bit more into here, maybe one or two more letters, and a tiny bit up there. So basically I'm just grabbing a color to finish a motif, so I'll finish this up next, and then if I have more of that color, I add it to the border. So that's how it's going for me. I'm really loving it. This is such a beautiful design, and um, if anything, my lighter blue choice, it, I think it's showing up okay on camera here. It's not as good as the rest, obviously, but I still think it shows up better in person than it does on the camera. So, all right, that is my final whip of the last two weeks. All right, so those were my whips. The next thing that we're gonna do is take a look at the footage that I took. I took it on my phone. I didn't set up my tripod and everything like I do for this for my regular floss tube videos um, because I was upstairs in my kitchen and I just didn't I didn't do the whole thing the same way so I apologize if the camera work is not the best I was holding it with one hand and doing stuff with the other hand but hopefully it helps you get an idea of what I'm doing so I basically learned the um I learned the basics of what I would build like my process off from Mama Loves UGB. She has a dyeing tutorial in her video, which I watched about a year ago. And since then, um, instead of referencing back to it, I've just kind of been making it up as I go along. So, you know, it's not really like I don't really stress too much about it. I just think, well, let's play around with some color today and then you know, let's see what happens. And then this will fit for some project at some point. Most of the time I am dyeing neutrals. I don't do super saturated colors a lot. And that's because I do already have some from dyers like Bestitch Me. And I don't tend to dye, I don't tend to um, stitch on super brightly saturated colors. So I'm usually making neutrals with like a little bit of color in them. Um, as far as my cross stitch bases go I guess I think of blue as like a neutral because I do like stitching on blue a lot um but I'm a polish maker I have my own nail polish brand and so I'm always messing with colors and adding you know flakies and hollow and shimmer and glitters and all the different things so that's really fun for me and I just don't take it too seriously because you think to yourself well if you buy a $20 fat quarter and you dye it and you don't necessarily like it that much you can always add more pigment to it and dye on top of it or you know you can you can change it you can always find a use for it at some point so I say don't stress about it just have some fun see if you like it and now I'm gonna go ahead and share with you what I was doing all right I'm gonna do my best to explain what it is I do you need some containers and some boiling water and fabric. You want to wet the fabric before you use it. You're also going to need writ dye. I'm not showing you specific recipes here today because for one I don't keep specific recipes um, but you will see a bunch of the colors of dye that I particularly like. So this first one that I'm going to show you is the simplest dyeing method and it's also going to um, give you like the least dramatic effect on the fabric so you put your different dyes in there you mix them up nicely together and then you saw me pull the spoon up earlier to see like what color I was making I'm starting out with this piece of I think this one was just white um, fabric or maybe this was a cream color and then I'm holding it into there and just picking it up and looking at it and seeing if it has enough color Then I'm holding it in picking it up and I do that over and over till I get to the color I want and then I'm going to take it to the sink and then you want to wash all of the pigment out this was very hot by the way <laughs> because this first one it really doesn't stay in the dye that long you saw me add a lot of dye another way to do the same exact thing is to add a little bit of dye and then um 
to let it stay in for a long time. So there's the first one. That one has very light modeling. The modeling occurs because I scrunched up the fabric. So there's areas that didn't get as much dye on them as others. But that one's really simple and fun to just mix colors. This next one, I'm mixing these two colors here. And we're going to do a, basically the same thing to start. I want to make a gray color. And I want it to be slightly blue tinted. Mixing that up together. Then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take the wet fabric and put it into... Oh, I'm looking at the color. I'm like, mm, yeah, I like that. Okay, then I started here with a cream. I'm, um, I think these were just like fat eighths or something. And then, so sticking it in there, I like to use a spoon to kind of hold it down. Otherwise, it will float to the surface and then, and then like that part won't get as colored. So if I want an all over mostly color, I'll hold it down with the spoon. So I was putting it down, putting it up, checking it. I put it into a different container here because I'm going to show you something a little bit different. So now what I'm doing is I'm trying to move the fabric around to get it scrunched in different ways. So it's not exactly the same scrunching as the last one. And then this technique is really daring, but it's one of my favorites. You just straight up pour the black pigment right onto the fabric and you only let it sit there for a little bit like that. And you're letting the water have it like move around and then you're immediately going to move it. So it is going to darken up all of your fabric a little bit. So this method wouldn't work if you like had the exact color of the base of the fabric that you wanted. But what this does, you're going to see in a second, is it leaves this beautiful streak on the fabric, which I really like. It looks like I'm going to do it again. So I guess I did it three times. And it's kind of, it's not like a totally random placement because I am turning the fabric so that I make sure that it happens in more than just like one space, rinsing out. Rinse, 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 rinse. But see these big dark black splotches? I really like this look, especially with like gray fabric. So here's how it looks once it is all laid out and it has these really beautiful dark modeling. And you want to make sure and not let it sit on there too long. This last one is the most complex. We're going to do three different things. So first we're going to dye it. We're going to dye the whole base. This one um, was a little bit more experimenting for me because I started with a piece of blush Zweigart fabric and I don't like pink like basically at all. So I was wanting to turn this into a mauve. So I'm going to go in like many, many layers of brown to try to change this base subtly because I didn't want to make it too, too dark. So I let this one sit in the brown for a long time. There wasn't a ton of pigment in there. So as you can see, I'm lifting it up and I'm like, hmm, that still looks really pink. Well, okay, we're going to change that. So then um, I'm moving it over to a separate area so that I can add more pigment. So now I'm going in with dark brown. So I started with tan. Now I'm going a little darker, going to mix that in there, get it all swished around so I could have just put that dark brown right on top of the pink fabric and it would have made that dark modeling but instead I am going to do that with this fabric but I'm going to do it a little bit later so now that I've got that remixed up I'm going to put this fabric back in there I'm trying to scrunch it in different ways that's what you see me doing there and then I'm going to push it down in here because I want it to have that light modeling like um, that first one did all over. I wanted to turn it to kind of like mauve brown color all over with some light modeling. So I'm sticking it in there and then I'm looking at it after, you know, it's probably been like 15 minutes and I'm like, oh man, that still just looks too pink. And I just didn't want to do that. So I got me some more um, dye. I added in some darker colors and then, um, yeah, I'm dark. I'm mixing in some darker stuff because I was like, well, whatever this mixture was that I did, it just didn't get rid of the pink enough. So basically I just added more liquid and I had started with tan and I was like, okay, to change this, I'm not going to let this sit for an hour. So now I'm just going to add it into some more darker brown. So I'm going for, um, I'm trying to like leave a little bit of that lighter brown while getting a lot of the darker brown. And then here I did something a little different. I mixed up some indigo and I was trying to do the technique from the second one um, with the blue on this. And it I did not end up liking the way that it looked. So here's an example of me just kind of rolling with it. So 
in theory, I thought this could be really cool, but it didn't give me the same effect as when I did it with the black because it was such a contrast from the base color, and, <clears throat> excuse me, and the splotchy color. And so you're watching me do it for a little while here, but then what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna um, go back over it. So one of the reasons it just ended up being splotchy was because my fabric wasn't entirely covered with water um, because I was running out of the boiled water at this point. I had kept boiling some more water, but if you really want that smoky technique to work better, you need to be dropping the the um, pigment not directly onto the cloth like that like in the other one that I did where it was dissipating through the liquid so this is good this will give you an idea of what maybe not to do but anyway you know you can do whatever you want with your cloth if you want there to be big drops on your cloth that's how you would want to do it but when I had when I had pulled this out and looked at it I wasn't very pleased with the way that it looked and it's because of those couple things that I just mentioned to you so what I ended up doing and I did like the finished look was I went and put over a brown over top of wherever I had put those splotches so in between that last bit of blue and this, what I didn't show you was that I took the cloth out, I totally rinsed it in cold water, then I put it back in boiling water and I put brown, these like brown smoky splotches, right over the spots that had blue. So it's gonna make a nice combination on the fabric. Rather than just seeing blue, you're gonna see some layering of like a little bit of blue shadowed behind some like darker splotches of brown. So I'm letting them kind of sit on there for a second and then I'm moving them so that it doesn't make it too, too dark. But you're gonna see in a second, it really did make it dark. But you know, you should just have fun with it. Here's the, the last one right here on the right. Have fun with it, you guys. Life's too short to not have fun and play around with color and experiment. So anyway, let me know if you give it a try. All right, now that we have looked at that video, I'm gonna share with you some haul. I do have, I've joined four different floss of the month clubs now, and I shared with you the MPI one that I get from Fat Quarter Shop a couple weeks ago, and I have three more from March to share with you now. So I'm gonna talk about those first and then a few patterns, and then I'll meet you back in a minute. All right, so for haul, I'm gonna start with the floss clubs that I joined that I wanna share with you, the floss that I received for March. So I joined the Forbidden Fiber Co. and she sends you 10 um, skeins of hand-dyed floss that are just random colors, which I love. And then two of them are limited edition or like made for that month, I think. So here's what I have. We got Leo, which is this beautiful, I'm really, really excited to probably use this for like a whole project. I need to grab a bunch more from her. Really hoping this is not a one-off because this is probably my favorite one. I love all those deep gray purples and reds in there. So that's Leo. God of Thunder is hilarious um, for Thor. I don't know what I'd use that for, but it's pretty cool. Then we have this great neutral. It's a very barely blue white called Snowdrift. Razzleberry is a great rose shade. Then we have one of the two exclusive colors. This is number 59 and it's this really deep rich. It's almost like cinders, but it's um, darker. There's like more black in it. There's this little tuft of gold right there. So anyway, really, really yummy, super deep, deep red. Next we have Wood Violet, super pretty pinky purple. Then we have Sunkissed, a really lovely bright coral salmon. This is the other exclusive color. It's number 54 or limited edition color. And it's a yummy teal with some deeper kind of gray teal in there. Dark Roast is a dark coffee brown, really lovely deep coloration, kind of grayed out deep brown. Then we have Black Magic, which is just a not super dark black. Then there's Fern. This one is a lovely um, kind of medium cool green. 
And then this one is my second favorite. This is called King Forever and it's violets and it's so beautiful. The next floss club that I joined is for the Be Stitch Me Silk. So I am no longer in her fabric club. I switched to the silks. Um, who knows, maybe I'll start dyeing my own silks pretty soon too. <laughs> I got the hang of dyeing fabric and I now am interested in tracking out a bunch of different um, dyers flosses. So this is the March silk pack, a bunch of different greens. So beautiful. I love, love, love stitching with green. So we've got Ogre. Isn't that cute? It looks like Shrek. This next one is called Forage. It's kind of go like going towards a minty color, like a mint chocolate chip color. Then we have this beautiful one, which is a green brown called Troll. Love it. I'm super excited because of this selection to see what's coming for next month. This um, deepest green is called Crocodile. It's a deep medium green. And then the lightest shade is called Mojito. So I love that. Um, if you're interested in learning about her clubs, just head over to her website. I'll link that in the description bar below. And I believe you just need to send her an email and let her know you wanna join. And then the next flosses that I wanna share with you are from Roxy Floss Co. This is also her March. This is the March Neutral Selection which is very colorful to me, so I'm pumped about that. So the first one is this green, and it's called Dirty Martini, and it is so luscious, lots of browns in there. Then the other green is this green with cream instead of green with brown. Well, there's a little bit of tan in there too, and that one's called Extra Virgin Olive Oil. Isn't that cute? So cute. Then we have three purples, the lightest of which is kind of a wisteria purple, and it's called Marvelous. Then the medium one has a lot of plum shades in it, and it's called Creme de Violette, and really yummy plums and some burgundy in there. And then the darkest one is so rich and luscious, and it's called Over It. So that is my flosses that I've added for um, March and expect to see a lot more of my um, growing stash being used for patterns rather than the called for flosses because I really, really enjoy that. Okay, so I mentioned in my finishes that I picked up a few more of these word plays from Brenda Gervais. This is September. And here is what it looks like. I shopped for these directly from Country Stitches, her website, and I found that um, it did not take long to get to me and things were cheaper there than um, necessarily going with another supplier, specifically for the last one I'm gonna show from her. So there's this. And then I got the August one, a little more toned down maybe than I want like a little more washed out. I might play with a little bit of the colors. So we'll see, but super cute. And I know it's gonna be fun because I've already done one. And then this specifically is the one that I got from her website because it was more cost effective than um, getting it elsewhere, I believe, because you got spring and summer for, it was $22, I think. I love these patterns, by the way. And then the book that also includes autumn and winter and I think elsewhere she has them split up into spring and summer and then autumn and winter I think maybe I'm totally wrong um, but that's what it looked like to me online so I decided to get it there because I get it all in one booklet and I love it and I don't know which one I should do first which one should I do first I don't know maybe this one I love it Alrighty, this one was just a random pickup that I got when I was getting some flosses for one of the kit-ups that I'm going to show you in just a second. So Seasons of the Heart Winter from the Blue Flower. And then Letters from Mom from Jeanette Douglas. This is the designer that designed my B stitches, my birthday start from last year that I love so much. So I just grabbed something else from her because I knew that I would love her pattern. So I just snagged something that looked cute. Okay, speaking of my bee stitches, this is that one floss. It's 
called Londonderry, Londonderry Linen. And it's in the shade Maple Sugar. And one of the only places I could find this where you didn't have to buy a bunch of skeins of it was at Sassy Jack's. But this took a whole month to get to me. I've been trying to be really patient. Um, but I've been really excited to finish that project and I needed this one for a large portion of it. So hopefully I don't need two, um, two skeins of it, but it looks like you don't separate this London Dairy Linen. Yeah, it's just one strand. So happily I'm not stitching that one on 40 count. I think it's on a 32 count affogato. So that means you're definitely gonna see some progress on that in the next two weeks. So this is exciting. It kind of feels, it's like thick and kind of rough, like burlap feeling. So that's interesting. While I was at Sassy Jack's, I picked up this one and this one that go together. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. I really, really love these. Um, and I don't think I need to add the words. I don't, I don't need to, yeah. I mean, I don't personally subscribe to that, <laughs> um, motto. So, but I love, love, love the patterns. So I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Maybe I'll stitch them like together right on top of each other or something. I don't know, but I think that they're cute. I love that these two designers are friends and uh, I love this one. I can't help myself. I love them both and I'm a hardcore Plum Street stan, but those bees are so, so cute. I also got this from Plum Street just because I think it was on sale, Remember Me, and Friends Are We. Remember Me, Friends Are We. Cute. I am feeling in a patriotic mood, so I picked up this from Twin Peaks and I haven't actually stitched anything from them but these would be a really quick just like couple days stitch just pick up one and you could have yourself a little and now that I've made a pillow I know it's not too daunting and I could have a patriotic small to set out for July already so these are really cute um, I think I also threw this in because it was on sale. The everyday sweet little things are the most beautiful. I don't know, maybe it wasn't on sale, but I snuck it into a cart when I was getting some floss or fabric or something. And that's from Heart and Hand. And then the last thing I want to share with you, I'm really excited about Jan Hicks Creates Vintage Christmas Alphabet. Whoops, so she has one of these little ornaments for every letter. And they're not, like they're pretty, the vintage and the vintage style is more on the prim side, so they're not too, too cutesy, whoops, which I like. So here's D and E, and then here is F and G, and I think that I have H and I on the way to me from someone, I'm not sure. I think, I think so, I think I found another one at a different shop and snagged it. So I'm really excited for those. Okay, moving right along, we are down to plans. So with plans, I always um, pick a random project with you from my 2022 mania. 2023 mania is coming up really soon. That's why I've been trying to knock out some of these mania pieces from last year so I can put some new starts in there because that's really exciting. I pretty much limit myself to one new start every two weeks. That's that's how I don't go like crazy with myself like I used to when I first found floss tube. So I will have one new start and I already have it planned um, for me to start today as it's Easter. So I'll share that with you in just a minute. We're going to use my random generator to pick a mania piece. And then I also have a tiny decisions wheel and I'm gonna pick another piece from my whip parade with you. All right, I wanna share with you two kit ups that I'm really excited. And I think this first one is going to be my next start. So I really wanna start um, and maybe I'll start it today because it's Easter today when I'm filming. Um, I'm going to start Jesus Loves Me This I Know from Plum Street Samplers. We get in Plum Street. There's some green back there. So this is the called for, um, Overdyed and DMC. 
but now that I have it all floss dropped and I just opened all of those beautiful new flosses that I just got from those clubs, I might put some of those shades in in place of some of these. We'll see, but I love these colors. Aren't they beautiful? And then this is my piece of hand dyed fabric. This is just some something of mine. Um, and it has cream and tan, a little bit of rosy wood color. So I think it'll be great on that. It's only like 145 by 150, so not too, too big. And I think I really want to start on Easter. And I love the idea of hanging that in my house. I just think that pattern is so precious that she just released at market this year. I've put it up on the screen so you can see. And so that's really cute. So look at these two blues she put in there. Oh, so, so good alongside these oranges. So really excited. I'm going to look through those flosses and see if I want to switch any out like maybe for this brown that's a really good brown though Ooh, that's lovely and then the second thing that I could up this week maybe you can figure it out from the flosses <laughs> probably not there's a lot of flosses this is the DMC um for the I always want to call it the lion the witch and the wardrobe it's for the peacock the unicorn the badger that amazing beautiful um design that I think I first saw on Nicole C's you, uh, floss tube and then I saw it again on Trixie Tricycle and the colors you guys I just had so much fun floss dropping and pulling out these DMC's they are so so good and I put the pattern up here on the screen so you can see um, these saturated hues and it's just so good so for a while I toyed with the idea of stitching it on a piece of green fabric which is what Jody from Trixie Tricycle is doing but then I decided that Although that would save me a lot of stitching time, I think that I would enjoy the pattern less because um, I have experience now stitching Tisket to Tasket on a dark green, and I know that it's a little bit more difficult. Like it'd be making more work, making more work for my eyes. One is more work for me in the long term. One is more work for me in my eyes long term. So i'm thinking about just stitching on a piece of white 40 count what do you guys think let me know because it's basically full coverage right so it doesn't matter too much what i pick to stitch it on I'm just going to use one strand of these on 40 count or i could put it on something like this which i think looks a lot better it's just if it's full coverage it's not going to matter what i'm stitching it on right so in my opinion it clearly looks so much better on that but I just have a piece of white sitting here that isn't over dyed and wouldn't oh there we go wouldn't you know be something I'd stitch like a sampler on so let me know what you think about that okay so now we're going to um, choose a project for my mania and I do want to mark off the stuff that is done so I won't be doing it if it gets rolled so this number 17 that's done July wordplay this hasn't been stitched on since I started it and mania is coming up soon and also if you're wondering why I only have one hand painted it's that's how I always am <laughs> I'm used to the people on my nail polish channel knowing that about me but I use this my dominant hand for making polish and this hand I use as a model for my website. I, I have other swatchers swatch my polish but I'm always swatching things for my polish channel and for my own brand on this hand and I don't paint my other hand. It's just a weird idiosyncrasy of mine but okay hello Halloween that is that Sue Hillis project still has some work to do. Ha Halloween Quaker has a lot of work to do. Little Red Riding Hood this one's in timeout so I'm going to take it off the list. Lavender Farm I still enjoy has lots of work to do this one is also I, it's not even in timeout I've decided I don't like it anymore I didn't like stitching with that um, basically yarn for that project Mirabilia still love half the fun I still I just stitched on it joyfulness this also hasn't been drawn since mania and it's a teeny tiny project and would be a really quick finish summertime has not been drawn since mania friendship garden I think maybe I do this one time. There's not much done on here, so I need to get that going again. Patchwork Print Temp, I just worked on this like a month ago. It's not my favorite thing on this list, um, but I think I'm determined to finish it. This one we've drawn a few times and I still love it and I should finish that up. 
Be Inspired, this one is in timeout. I've decided I really don't like stitching on the Crunchy Ada it's on. And it's a really cute um, tattoo style, American classic kind of style design. But I just really don't like the fabric that it's on and I'm not sure if it's if I'm really interested in finishing it. This we've drawn a few times and it is great. It's gonna take a long time to finish it, but I still like it. And then it's Spring Fe Fever is finished. So there's five projects in there that if they roll, we are going to re-roll. So let me pull up my random, my randomizer, my randomy random. Here we go. So we have, oops, I change it to 17 here. And let's see what we get. So this is specifically just last year's Mania projects. So we got five. Oh no, we got patchwork print temps again. All right, that's all right. I did that to myself. I put it out in the universe. I'm gonna get some more work done on this this time. It'll be great. It'll be wonderful. One of the reasons I don't enjoy stitching on this as much is because it's stitched with two strands over two. And it's just not as enjoyable for me that way. But I'm gonna get some more work done on it. The next thing I wanna do with you guys right now is um, draw another project for me to choose from my tiny decisions wheel. So if you watched my whip parade, this has all of the patterns from my whip parade, including these 17 minus five. So these 12 here. Um, and these six boxes are the ones that I drew in the last two weeks. And so that's why they're blanked out. Actually, one of them was Halloween this way and I had just stitched on that, so I skipped it. So I cheated a little bit, but I skipped that one. Um, but let's see what gets, what gets spun. Ooh, yay, my Mirabilia. That's my Mirabilia. I'm doing Garden Prelude. That's the one with the violinist and I'm so excited. So unfortunately, that's another project that's stitched on 32 count with two strands. But that's okay. I like it a little bit less because it's using two strands, but I will live with it for that pattern. It has beautiful silks mixed with DMCs. So yay, I'm so excited to get more work done on that. And then as far as um, stitching on specific days, remember in my whip parade, I said I was going to stitch on my Hawaii piece for my husband and I's anniversary on the 10th, which is coming up on Monday. We had a delightful dinner out. We took the girls with us um, on Saturday night. We went to this restaurant called Tuscany, I think. And um, I guess the waiter was saying that Post Malone lives like right down the street or something. It was kind of a um, fancier neighborhood. It was fun driving past all of the giant houses. Um, but it was really, really yummy. And we finished the meal with blueberry cheesecake, banana cream pie, and they brought us a lava cake for, um, our anniversary. <laughs> so, and I told my husband what I always tell him every time we go anywhere nice. I'm like, we could have just got dessert. Literally. I do appreciate the fine dining and the delicious food we had. I had this ragu with this, it was basically like stew. It was really yummy. Um, but I just, I'm a sweet tooth and the, the dessert is always the best part. <laughs> so anyway, we had such a nice time and then we went to go see Super Mario Bros with the girls after that, which I fell asleep about three quarters of the way in because I always do because I just get a little bored and it's in a dark theater. Um, but that was a cute family fun family friendly movie. So anyway, our anniversary is coming up on Monday, which is the day that this is going to be uploading. And so I'll do my anniversary stitching on that day. And then on the 13th, I'll have some dark stitching. I think I want to try to finish up that Barbara Anna witchy dreams. I will see how much I can get done on that on that day. And then I think it's time for a new camera. I've got this like light bar coming in the middle of my screen. Boop. Time to get a new camera. Well, anyway, we're at the end of the video. Um, <laughs> I was just about to say it's this light is just right in the middle of my face. I think if I hold something up here, there we go, it went away. Um, <laughs> I'll hold my little journal from Tim and I's podcast. If you like listening to couples discuss books and movies, if you want to join Tim and I on our, Tim's my husband, on our podcast, we were just reviewing a book of Tim's choosing called Earth's First Starfighter. He likes sci-fi. I usually end up choosing mysteries or 
sometimes romance stories, but more like mysteries and fantasies. Um, I'll link that in the description bar down below. I'm holding my notepad up here because that, that bar is annoying me. Um, and then the next video is going to be on Murder Mystery 2, the Adam Sandler and Jennifer Aniston movie that just came out on Netflix recently. My camera's not even that old, guys. I've been on YouTube on my nail polish channel for eight years now. This is my third camera that I've been filming on in eight years. Whoop. I just better end because I'm just going to keep messing with it. Um... And it's not time for a new one already. I just got one a year ago, so. You won't see the 25th stitching before my next floss tube, but it will be on the one after that because my next floss tube is going to be on April 23rd. Okay, that's going to be it for today. I'm going to put this up here one more time. I will see you guys back for another one um, in two weeks. Happy stitching until then. You'll find all the links to everything I mentioned in the description bar below. If I move closer, it goes higher. If I move back, it's something to do with my lighting, and I'm just not... I'm not knowledgeable enough about lighting in this in this device. I just need to I need to trade it trade it in trade it trade it to the garbage and, and trade it in for a new one. Anyway, okay, I'm gonna go. Happy Easter to everyone who celebrates. I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great week. And the spring weather we had 60 degree weather here in Utah today, which is very exciting because we've been it's been snowing. And I'm going to go because, like I said, that stinking line. All right. See you later. Bye.